and the school is in a panic. I've got students down under the table, kids. Heads under the table. Lane's attorney says he'll appeal. Unfortunately, what's in the mind of, of that shooter now, he's taken to the grave with him. Just minutes after firing two fatal shots at the Virginia Tech dormitory on roll for a school shooting that left three students dead, Lane. The whole time I just pretended to be dead. If you were to talk directly to the to the kids at Columbine or the people in that community, what, what would what would you say to them if they were here right now? I wouldn't say a single word to them. I would listen to what they have to say, and that's what no one did. Bullying can be a frightening experience for students. Extreme bullying online. Kids bullying kids. He told police that he was bullied and teased at school, and the shooting was in retaliation. We're all tired of seeing the headlines about school shootings, teen suicides, and other tragic results of bullying, which is why we created the Hello Herman Project. It is sad to say that one in three students have been bullied. 20% of young people admit to having bullied others. Nine out of 10 LGBT students have been bullied. In about 85% of bullying cases, no adults intervene. These numbers continue to rise and increasingly seem to touch almost every young person everywhere in our country. And as we all know, bullying creates the most extreme bullies, the people who feel pushed to a violent end. Hi, I'm John Buffalo Mailer, and about 10 years ago I wrote a play in response to the Columbine Massacre called Hello Herman. The play was my way of exploring the reasons why it seemed kids were resorting to more and more extreme levels of violence just to be heard. Fast forward to 2012. Bullying has reached a point of critical mass, and yet it seems no one is actually listening to these kids to get their take on what's going on. Which is why I got together with some friends to find a way of using art to do just that. Give them a way to be heard. I want to tell my story on your show. We want to launch a nationwide conversation using art via a national video contest, where students from all walks of life make three-minute videos using scenes from Hello Herman, then post them on the website for all to see. Our hope is to provide a context for parents and their children to have this imperative conversation about bullying so that they understand the full extent of the climate and culture of bullying their children are living through every day at school. We know this can work because teens have already, completely organically, created their own videos and presentations using Hello Herman as their artistic vehicle. With your help, we can enable thousands of young people to create and post their piece of this massive collective artwork that is the Hello Herman Project. Imagine thousands of students making videos all across the country that all promote anti-bullying. It's going to form a national video quilt that can serve as a reminder that we're all in this together and that no one likes to be bullied. Please, come be a part of the Hello Herman Project and let the world know you stand united with us in doing everything in our power to stop bullying where it starts, in our schools. Thank you. Bullied alive. Mm. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yes. Bullied. Yes, I have. Yes. Younger, yes. Yes. Actually, I was bullied in middle school. Oh, I was picked on constantly because of my looks. They called me pizza face, things like that. Um, wore glasses, so that made things worse. I wasn't the pop most popular kid in school. I was in sixth grade and I was wearing shorts and I went through this like chubby awkward phase and I was walking out of my classroom and this boy that I had a crush on said, ew, never wear shorts again. When I was 10 years old, I was in an extremely bad car accident and had some severe injuries to my head and when I went back to school, I had my hair all shaved off and I had scars all over my head and different um, injuries and kids uh, who were my friends and other students teased me uh, quite badly and um, the only way I could deal with it was sort of like just bottling it all in. It was very, very painful. I actually had a guy who tried to pay me to be his friend 
and I was just the meanest guy to him. Like, I would make fun of him every day and just say terrible things about him, like, to everybody. Um, because of how I got bullied from before, it kind of, kind of just coalesced and became something where I had to then make all my anger become outward. And I didn't really realize what I was doing until, like, the last few months of my senior year in high school. And that's when everyone was like, hey, Brandon, being kind of mean. That's when I figured that out. Now I tried to get better after that. I just, I think a big thing that made a difference for me is that I got an apology and a reason for why. So even on the bullying end of it, I feel like people bully other people because of their own insecurities. So I think if everyone would just talk to each other and try to figure out who they are, maybe we wouldn't have so many issues. Um, like I said, a lot of self-confidence, um, doing things that um, they will be proud of and that will boost their self-confidence. You know, being involved in school activities or or working or or studying, or surrounding yourself with yourself with awesome people with awesome influence and good people, pretty much. If you're if you're um, surrounded with good people, then I don't see why you would be a bully. I think just empathy. Everyone needs a little empathy. We need to be in each other's shoes and realize that everyone is living life. We all have shit that we need to get through, and we just need to realize that we are all the same circles. We are all the same people in general because we're all human. I think working on the Hello Herman play brought up a lot of personal issues for me. Being that I played the mother, it brought up a lot of old wounds. And as I had talked to my daughter, I was, I think it was, it started a healing process for me and her. I was able to identify, identify with Gail because I myself am, a, I was a working mom, and I. I've experienced bullying myself, but nothing is harder than to watch your own child experience bullying. And it's even harder when you try to talk to administration, counselors, teachers, and they sit there and turn their eye, they turn the other way and they act like they don't know what's going on. And your child comes home crying every day because she's being picked on or just told awful things. And just seeing the frustration that she can't do anything about it. As a parent, you do feel helpless. I know that there was a lot of, there's a line in the play that says, well, didn't you monitor the internet? Just the way my daughter was bullied, there was times when she rebelled. And there was a time where, no, I couldn't internet, I couldn't monitor everything she did on the internet. There was a time when I accidentally saw something on her Facebook that just, I was so devastated, I cried. and when I confronted her about it, she just was very upset with me and she felt I was snooping and she immediately changed her passwords and I no longer had access to see what was she what she was doing. And I think that no matter if, as a parent, you can only do so much. Even the best of parents still don't know 100% what their teenager is going through. Me personally, I've, uh, Hello Herman is very prevalent to me because I experienced bullying throughout high school and elementary school. In elementary school, the librarian was my best friend. Um, and it's, it gets to a point where people bully just because you're different. Um, I'm gay and I had vicious words said to me. I've had rocks thrown at me. It, it was absolutely horrible, but I think that Hello Herman is important because of the subject matter where you don't know what's going to happen to the person that you're bullying. That person, you just might push them a bit too far, and you have to see the after effects of your consequences. So located around the room, there are statistics that in, uh, refer or that range from mental health issues, gender identity, 
gun legislation, violence in schools. We'd like you to take a look at the statistics for what they are, which are keys to stopping this violence from happening again. Please internalize it and just talk to your kids. This is the most important thing we can stress. You have to be open with them and find out. Find out what's going on. Find out if they're being bullied. Find out if they're the bully. Nothing is going to change unless we change it. And I think John Buffalo put, put it best uh, in his dedication. In order to heal the pain, we need to discover the cause. And that's very important. And I think I, I, we thank you for being part of the Hello Herman project because we do want to find the help. The number one step is awareness. Now, us as a community, we need to pull together and do something about it. And we're doing something about it now just by being here, building awareness, finding hope, finding answers, prevention, and hope for the future. Thank you.